alone in Christ our ark. And another universal judgment is surely coming. The grace of God is seen in the grief of God. God didn't want to destroy the earth. And there was a long patient wait. 120 years he sent Noah, a preacher of righteousness, to warn people. But then he provided a door in the ark that the whomsoever will might come. And he gave grace until the time came when the door was shut. And Noah and his family were kept safe in the ark. <clears throat> There's a warning for us here. First, knowing this, that there will come in the last days scoffers, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. <clears throat> Someone said to me, Roy, nobody speaks about the second coming anymore. Well, I'm going to speak about it, and I'm going to continue to speak about it until I go home, okay? Because the Bible tells us that Jesus is coming again, and we need to be ready, and we need to warn others. <clears throat> we need God's power to do that, but you shall receive power, the Holy Spirit coming upon you, and you shall be a witness to me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so the Bible says that when you see these things coming that we're seeing coming on the earth now. The Bible says, look up because your redemption draweth nigh. We need to know what is that redemption. We need to know what to expect. And I believe in a few moments we're going to look at the... This is, this is a beautiful, beautiful portion of Scripture. And the Bible calls it our blessed hope. And again, brothers and sisters, there are so many people, like in the days of Noah, we don't want to hear this. And we've got a thousand reasons why. One woman came up to me, I don't believe in anything that Paul says. I only believe in what Jesus says. I said, sister, I'm not going to argue with you, but I believe what God says in his word. And if it's, and if it's there, I'm going to believe it. Now this is our blessed hope. This is what we're looking forward to. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to close now. But I would not have you ignorant, brothers, concerning those who are asleep. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 Or have died that you be not grieved even as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, hands up those that believe that Jesus died and rose again, that's right, even so God will also bring with him all those who have fallen asleep through Jesus. What happens when we pass out of this world absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's where it's all about, brothers and sisters. All of us have got to meet Jesus at one day. And so therefore, if we're still alive when Jesus comes, okay, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain, if, we're, if Jesus comes tonight, until the coming of the Lord shall not go before those who are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, speaking about the same thing, he says, Behold, I speak a mystery to you. We shall not all fall asleep. That means we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a glance of an eye at the last trumpet, for a trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall all be changed. This is the blessed hope, brothers and sisters. This is coming up for each one of us that believe and trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. And our blessed hope, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. You know, I've got a lovely picture in my mind. My grandma, as I've told you, she reared me up and, and towards the end of her life she had a huge ulcer on her leg and the poor soul could hardly walk, you know. And I didn't make it any easier for her either, trying to catch me, I might add, but uh, yeah, that was my grandma. But you know, on that day, she's not going to have an ulcer. 
She's not going to be nearly 70 or 80 years old. Glory to God. She's going to be about 25 and looking so good. Hallelujah. With not, with not a, a blemish. There's no sickness, nothing on her body. She's going to have a brand new body. And I'm going to see her on that day. I'm not going to really, I'm going to know who she is and she's going to know who I am. Hallelujah. What a day that's going to be when we all meet together. Hallelujah. When we rise to meet the Lord in the air. The Bible says that's our blessed hope. Hallelujah. That's something that's coming up for you and me. Hallelujah. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's what the Bible says. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Hallelujah. We know where we're going, brothers and sisters. We have a challenge before us because there is many out there that, have never, that haven't come to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And what a challenge it is. We don't want them to be left behind. We remember the day when God shut that door on that ark and those inside were safe. Let's all stand and pray, shall we, just for a moment? Hallelujah.